Before you get to see it up close, let me show you how it got to this point. The first time I saw it, I knew it was going to be a lot of work. I had my reservations about it, but there was no body damage or rust holes. I could see it had potential. When the seller showed me a glimpse of what it could become, I was hooked. I'd rented a trailer knowing that I was most likely going to buy it. Luckily, the driveway was on a slope and we rolled it onto the trailer and it followed me home. Yikes, it's following me. There it is, on the back. I got some neighbors to help me push it into the driveway as it wasn't running. I just got this. This is my 1976 VW bus and I'm going to be doing a renovation on it and hopefully an electric conversion. So we have quite a bit of work to do. The rubber seals around the windows were in pretty bad shape and starting to show some signs of rust which had to be eliminated and new seals put in. Now the reason it wasn't running was because there wasn't an engine in it. It has the later model 091 transmission, which is the strongest one. It had a bench seat inside and the original interior panels, but that was all destined to go. The floor is in great shape with no rust. The seats are okay too. In fact, the passenger seat is on a swivel, which is fantastic. I started by removing some of the windows, using suckers to hold the glass so it didn't fall, then cutting the old rubber seals with a knife. The windshield was really heavy and I nearly dropped it. Took out the old seats. They're in good shape, but not any use for my camper conversion plans. The panels were pretty nasty, so they all had to go. I'll use them as templates for making some new panels. Removing the headliner revealed who else had been living in the bus. Out with the seats and the old carpet, there was a lot of cleaning needed here. I had to scrape off a ton of old glue and gunk. This turned out to be my favourite tool. I took out more of the old trim and revealed some more lodgers. It was quite a job getting these old mats out, but they had to go so I could clean everything up and get ready for paint. I cleaned up the floor really well. This is all going to get sealed and painted. The passenger side rear window was next to come out and then the cover over the door runner. The wire brush attachment got rid of all the dirt. The trim on the driver's side came off too, and that got the same wire brush treatment. I took the doors off so it would be easier to work on them. Taking the sliding door off wasn't easy, but by the end of the job I'd had it on and off a few times, and I got the hang of it. I'm now going to start sanding the front of the bus. With the windows out, I can take the frames down to bare metal and be able to stop any further corrosion. And with the lights and trim removed, I can get in with the wire brush, clean everything up. 
Using an orbital sander, I got started on the big job at hand. Sanding. Lots of sanding. And lots and lots more sanding. Oh my god, this was absolutely not supposed to take this long. I've been at it for five days, sanding and sanding. About this time, I started to realise just how big this job really was. But there was no turning back now. I continued by taking the rear hatch glass out and then took the hatch itself off. And by now it was all pretty much stripped down. I'm going to use Metal Blast. I treated any surface rust with Metal Blast, which neutralizes it and prevents any further corrosion. I hosed everything down and cleaned out the engine compartment. This was about the dirtiest place on the whole bus, but well preserved from all of the oil and grease. Rust Bullet, the best product ever. I painted it liberally everywhere to seal the metal and protect it from any rust ever happening again. This bus is going to last forever, if I ever get it put back together. How am I ever going to get this thing back together? Shh. In the movies they call this the dark night of the soul. It was a tough time, but I had a dream. I was dreaming of converting this bus to an electric motor. Unfortunately though, the motor wasn't available due to delays in shipping from Italy, so I continued on with the improvements. I decided to cut the partition out so I had somewhere to swivel the front seat to. So I'm going to cut this out across here. I thought this was such a cool shot until I saw that I'd burned the front element of my lens. Being able to turn the front seat around is one of the best improvements that one can make to a camper van. I finally finished off sanding the roof and the top half of the doors and then I sprayed on a coat of primer. I sprayed the top half of the bus in metallic grey and clear coat. Then I could start putting the windows back in with new rubber seals. There's quite a knack to it, using string to seat the rubber into the frame. I used suckers again to hold the glass so it didn't fall. I got a nice new sliding window for the passenger side and I put the glass back into the doors, lined them with insulation and then made wood panels for the inside. Then put the doors back on. With these beauties as inspiration, I chose a design for the front that would both honour the past and herald in the future. After fixing everything under the dash and painting the dash itself, I can now put the windshield back in with its new rubber seal. This time I got a little help from a friend while I worked the magic rope trick from the inside. slam dunk. I could now see that the bus was going to be great, so it was time to work on the mechanicals and make it safe to drive. I mean, it would be terrible to have an accident and damage it after all of this work. First off, I had to overhaul the rear brakes. New brake shoes, wheel cylinders and drums. I removed the axle shafts to replace the torn boots, but they showed signs of wear so I bought new ones. The front brakes were all frozen up and it took a while to get them apart. The control arm ball joints were worn, so they had to be replaced. The old ones have to be pressed out, so I had to remove the control arms from the bus and take them to a machine shop. It took 10 tons of pressure to get them out. Now, with new ball joints, I got the control arms back in place. 
new wheel bearings, new brake lines, new disc caliper, and finally underseal in the wheel arches. I couldn't keep this old thing, so a new brake booster and master cylinder completed the system. Filled it up with fluid and bled out all of the air. Rock solid. That gives me a lot of confidence, knowing this bus is safe to drive. Next, I drained the transmission. There was no signs of metal particles, so it looks to be in good shape. I got a bunch of fresh gear oil and refilled it. The transmission is 091 4 speed, which is the strongest one they made. With fresh paint in the engine compartment, there was just one question What am I going to do for an engine? I looked online and found a company that sells rebuilt Type 4 engines. I drove down to San Diego and bought a nice 2 litre with twin carbs. It was getting late, so I camped the night with the engine as my companion. Back home, I made sure everything was in good shape. It's complete with new clutch, new alternator, all ready to go in. The motor slipped right into the engine bay with a little wiggling and jiggling. Everything connected up and I rewarded myself with a beer. Now, with all that behind me, it was time to address the real purpose of this bus, fixing up the interior for camping. I chose a sustainable bamboo hardwood for the floor and found it was really great to build the cabinets with too. After insulating the ceiling, I cut a sheet of laminate and screwed it in place. I bought some awesome wheels and put them on and it was time for a paint job. As if by magic, the bus was transformed. Manifested in my driveway. Inspired by a bottle of beer. So this is how it all works. The bench seat opposite the sliding door is a great place to sit and look out at the view. There's a drawer underneath the seat with a latch to keep it closed when driving. The seat back folds up, covering the window. Bedding can be stored behind the seat back and simply rolled out when needed. This is 32 inches wide, very comfortable for one person. Just fold the bedding away and drop the seat back down again. For two people, the seat back cushion stays down when the back is folded up undo a catch and slide the seat out. The cushion fits in the back making a four foot wide sleeping space for two. The drawer continues to be accessible even with the sliding door closed. To convert the bed back to a couch simply lift out the cushion, slide the base back in and drop the seat back down again. There's a cupboard that's suitable for shoes, with a drawer for other stuff. Another drawer, ideal for food storage. This one's also accessible from the top. There's a small fold-up table and a cup holder. On the roof is a 100 watt solar panel. This is the control for the solar panel with USB and 12 volt power outlets. Here's a closet space for hanging clothes. The sink and stove will open up for cooking inside the bus.
there's a drawer for utensils and more storage in the top. The sink and stove also open to the back of the bus for cooking outside. The water tap extends out to the sink. The utensil drawer also opens outwards. The water nozzle folds away and is held safely in place. This is a removable water bag which can be hung up and used as a shower. The outer surface is designed to heat up in the sun. And this is the main water tank which also gets warm in the sun. There's a table inside which stows next to the driver's seat and works for both the bench seat and the passenger seat. So there you have it folks, the green bus renovation story. Hit the like button and subscribe so you'll be informed of all the great places I go.